Okay, it's cheeseburger. Transmission time. I'm in the middle of having a burger. And, um, I have found a picture of Hubble, which is quite a good one. With the astronauts working on it. And what I did was I uh, have taken this handrail, which is seen on this Hubble image. You can see the handrail there, phone all the way up. And then I have taken the handrail on the image containing Adam. And I have lined it up. And I have sized it up so that those actual fittings are all in line with the Hubble Space Telescope as seen on the background image. So we can see the two astronauts there in the background. And as I say, these um, handrails are all to scale now. So with that in mind, the, the fact that the handrails are in scale means everything else has to be in scale. So here we have Adam. Um, next to an astronaut if these are to scale so um, as I say I lined up the handrails or the handrail fittings so that they all run um, as you can see there, they fit as we bring them back into the centre of the frame. On the Hubble, and those two black squares you see there moving up and down are now going to get crossed over and sized up between the two. And they fit. So we have here a representation to scale of Adam up against the astronauts working. on Hubble and this mission image. Uh, I'm quite taken aback because um, I'm taken aback because I said a year ago when it was discovered that these were tall creatures. I said these were very tall. Um, you know, like eight foot, nine foot tall. Kind of tall. Um, Yeah, um, yeah, I'm thinking definitely higher, than, taller than seven feet. This thing was coming through a screen, um, and I have just a snapshot of that in my head, um, where I seen one of these entities coming through a screen of this light on December the eleventh, at four forty-five a.m and um, it was bending its head as it came through this screen and at the time it looked very um, I don't want to say pissed off but it was very air focused and it was just very um, emotionless uh, I guess it was just like a case I didn't come you <laughs> something along the lines um, and as I say when I got Adam um, rendered last year and involved a lot of powerful subconscious memories that were probably you know um, completely unknown to me um, consciously in a conscious way um, so uh, I'm quite freaked out at this um I'm really, really freaked out at this. That uh, learning this tonight. That um, this uh, this seems to match up perfectly with um, my observations uh, and my uh, suspicions about the height of these entities. Sixty-seven. Uh, remember that. 67 to 69 and we'll see this lined up and I'll line up these handles again 
so you can see there that they fit and again we get a fit here so these fit which means that Adam is to scale and there is Adam to scale against one of these astronauts um, so there or thereabouts um, there or thereabouts so they are not little grey aliens they are big tall blue aliens or as I told my niece and nephew when I showed them it not to scare the loving crap out of them I told them it was a big baldy space cat to which my niece replied it's got no hair and I'm like, yeah, it's big body this blue space cat. And I'm like, yay. And I'm like, right, okay, don't be freaked out, children. It's only an alien. Um, so that was at four years old. And um, my niece and nephew were one of the first, were uh, some of the first people in the world to see this. And uh, they took it the way they were just like, hey, it's got no hair. So it wasn't like, ah. So they were only four and they were um, of sound mind enough to just realise that uh, it has no hair. Uh, the big baldy blue space cat has no hair. So it's nothing to worry about whatsoever. Um, obviously if NASA had been working with them for 40 years, and uh, no telling us, it must be all pretty cushy between everybody. So, um, but they're keeping it quiet. So there you go folks, um, there is that. And uh, I'm a bit freaked out by all this now, so I'm going to go just go and eat my burger now in peace. Um, but as I say, I marked out the distance between the handrails. So that's to scale, and if that's to scale, then Adam, the entity, is to scale. So... And he's only two feet away from Hubble, maximum. Uh, so he might be just a little bit smaller, but considering, or bigger even, as the case would be, it would be. Um, there he is. <coughs> there he is. I need to eat. I've no eaten all day. It's now after 11 o'clock. I'm going to go and finish my burger. It's now cold. Uh, and I hope you found this educational. So there are the, the handrails, as I say, uh, and they matched up, and there's Adam, um, once that's all matched up to size, so uh, he's not small by any means, and uh, this is a year later, I've had this now confirmed, so um, there you go guys, right, I need to eat, I'm going to go and consume this cold burger. What I've been looking forward to, so uh, use guys can all um, you know digest that um, while well, I'm digesting my burger. Um, I'm kind of used to it all now, but I'm kind of I'm feeling as if my my whole consciousness or my whole body is kind of going that um, high static way. Uh, I'm just like oh, so yeah, uh, that's done something. Um, that's had a physiological effect. Um, haha, <laughs> haha. So, um, I found a crystal actually. Um, my mate was up the other night. Uh, look at that. Oh, it's absolutely brilliant in the uh, in the monitor. But uh, this was uh, I found it the day before, and I thought, you know what, that has to be my mate Quarky's. Because it's the sort of thing that he'd be carrying on him. But um, this is ice cold. Every time I pick it up, it's ice cold. Um, so it's a, it's, it's a pretty cool wee gem. Uh, wee gemstone. And uh, whatever it is. Uh, crystalline or quartz, whatever it is. But uh, it's freezing to the touch. And look at that and the light. Oh, it's really cool. And uh, when I turn it around, you see it forming different colours and stuff there. So there you go. Cheers.